life-giving spirit through our might darkness and chaos turn to light voice of the prophets from above speaking of god's eternal love come holy spirit wind and fire come fill your church our hearts inspire good morning and welcome to saint patrick's let us now begin our liturgy in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit my dear friends as we prepare ourselves now to celebrate the 26th sunday in ordinary time our gospel from mark is asking us to to reflect in our own lives of the things like the gospel is saying, if something offends you or, or leads you to sin, pluck it out, if your eye, if your foot, or your hand. Again, do not take that liter literally, but at least realize if there are problems in our lives that the gospel is asking us to look at them and to try to make changes to correct it. And so for the times that we have failed to do that, let us now take a moment and and ask the Lord for pardon and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses, taking some of the Spirit that was on Moses. The Lord bestowed it on the 70 elders. And as the Spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now, two men, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and as they prophesied in the camp. So 
when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who came from his youth, had been Moses' aide, and he said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered them, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all. The word of the Lord. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Though your servant is careful of them, very diligent in keeping them, Yet who can detect failings? Cleanse me from my unknown faults. From want and sin especially restrain your servant. Let it not rule over me. Then shall I be blameless and innocent of serious fault. The precepts of the Lord Give joy to the heart. A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impeding miseries. Your wealth has rotted away, and your clothes have become moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded. And that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasure for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fatted your hearts for the day of the slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Your word, O Lord, is true. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. 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 And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he doesn't follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no, there is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not, ag- whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives a cup of water to drink because he belongs to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones to believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and they were thrown, and then he was thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed 
than with two hands to go in Gehenna with an unquenchable fire. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It had been better for you to enter life crippled than with two feet to go be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to remain in the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning, as we take a few moments to look at our readings, in our first reading from Numbers and also from Mark, our Gospel, we have two points from a very interest, on a very interesting problem. One is mentioned numerous times throughout the entire Bible. An effective way of understanding is to divide and conquer. Dissension, jealousy, rivalry, turf wars, those are the things that our readings are asking us to think about this morning. In the book of Numbers, God has taken some of the spirit that he gave to Moses and bestowed it on 72 elders, and they begin to preach. Iliad and Mead were supposed to be among the group, but were not. Nevertheless, the Spirit of the Lord descended upon them, and they proclaimed or prophesied. A young man quickly told Moses, My Lord, stop them. Moses answered, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Were we all prophets? in our own church, in our town, in our area. In Mark's gospel, Jesus says, whoever's not against us is with us. Not everybody thinks that the Pope is great. You know, sometimes there's things that he says that kind of rub us the wrong way. There are other critics out there, and even within our own church. But what do we say to them? How do we respond to them? I think, for example, when Pope Benedict um, offered the Latin Mass, and now Pope Francis has changed that and taken it away, and it has caused some stir. But how do we respond to when the Pope does something like that? What do we think? What does it do for us? And how do we keep a positive attitude, even in our own church, when we might disagree with that? Which of the messages would you have preferred not to hear? Pope Francis, if you didn't, didn't mind to edit or a portion of the gospel, Jesus tells us to do what Jesus tells us to do in the gospel. Jesus says, if you, if you have a problem, cut it out. If that part of the gospel gives you a problem, then cut it out. <laughs> not that what Jesus is saying isn't true, that all of us finding ourselves at times disrupted by Jesus' message, we find ourselves wanting to cut that part out. So when we think about the gospel and what Mark is saying, are there things in our lives that we need to cut out? What is really challenging us to cut out is some of these parts of our lives. The challenge of the gospel is hitting upon or against the things in our lives that maybe we should distance ourselves from, that maybe we should be plucking them out. So what, whatever it is for each and every one of us, each of us have at least one or maybe more that we think we've got to get, get out of our lives. Chances are in some way, the things that we think that we need to cut out are bad. It's amazing that in the gospel message today, the things that Jesus says to cut out are good. Cut off your hand, pluck your eye out. These are good things that have been distorted into so many different, to something less than good. So what do we do now? Well, we need to dig a little, little deeper to find out what's the tool that we got to dig up or what's the root we got to dig up. What's the heart of the matter that we got to cast out? How do we get there? We have to look at the troubles that we have and ask ourselves one word, why do I do what I do? Keep digging until you get down to the taproot that needs to be pulled out, or else it will be like a weed. It's going to keep showing up again and again. Two bad roots that need to be pulled up. Dissatisfied with now? You look for things 
that would you like to distance yourself from? You never appreciate what mo the moment is. We can really enjoy this moment now. There's something good in that, even in the bad route, there's something good. What does it cause us to do? That's the driver that tries to make us better. I'm not fully at peace now. I need to make my life better. Satan even twists that and tries to make us say, start to say, well, I just deserve it. We're going to, in the direction that makes us feel better. I'm sensing many of the things that we need to cut out are simply what? But the question is, what do we fill those voids with? Hopefully, when you come up to the Eucharist this morning, you use the Eucharist to fill those needs in our lives. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn to the Lord in humble prayer that we might perform mighty deeds in his name. For the church, as she desires to belong to Christ, May she be an attractive option for those outside the church. We pray to the Lord. For all peacemakers, including those who do not follow Christ, may they unite their hearts together in love. We pray to the Lord. For a willingness on the part of all religions to work together for the prosperity of our planet, we pray to the Lord. For those who don't believe in God, that they may embody love and concern for others, we pray to the Lord. For all those gathered here today, that we may possess the great faith and courage of Mary and find strength in her example, we pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, that they may be brought into the peace of God's presence with all their sins forgiven, we pray to the Lord. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. God of all peace and every consolation, you created a world with great diversity. Give humanity the gift of free will. Help us to determine what is right and good for the benefit of all creation. May we learn to respect and honor those who do, do not follow Christ, yet pursue you to do your will in hidden ways through Christ our Lord. Go. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, go, 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 go ye therefore and teach all nations, go, 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 go. baptize.
baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost. Go, go, go. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. My dear friends, let us now still continue to pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you, and lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name or over, over all that you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so now with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and to praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us offer each other some sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Again this morning as we take our second collection, again we're still holding up the rain is constantly keeping us held up. Again with the rain we got yesterday and all week long, we're still not able to get the yellow painted on the, the steps out here yet and to get a bid for the sidewalks and to get the dirt in. So those are our projects we're trying to get corrected right now and as hopefully the rain will cooperate pretty soon. And let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go now in peace. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too.